but we're going to proceed with the with the list as printed. Um, so, Madam Secretary. Yes, the first speaker is Ms. Elizabeth Spike. Ms. Ms. Spike. Ms. Spike, come on down. To be followed by Ms. Rebecca Rodriguez. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Spike. I am the chair of the Houston Regional Group of the Sierra Club, but today I'm speaking to you as a private citizen. First, I would like to thank you for considering a recycling contract that includes glass. Next, I would like to request that the city of Houston ensure the public can make comments about the recycling contract throughout the entire life cycle of this contract. And finally, I am concerned about how flexible the recycling contract will be. 15 years is a long time and a lot can change in that period of time. Um, I'm concerned that um, I, I would like to see best management practices incorporated as they evolve best manage management practices that are grounded in the best science, that are socially responsible and just, and economically bearable by the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'll be speaking on that tomorrow, laying it out. Thank you very much. Councilmember Boykins. Councilmember Boykins. I I'm sorry? Miss Spikes. Spikes. Ms. Spikes, if you'll come back. I have a uh, question. Councilmember Boykins. I'm sorry, Ms. Spike. Thank you for coming, ma'am. Just out of curiosity, were you speaking against a recycle? facility? No, no, I'm not speaking oh. against it. Okay. I'm just expressing some concerns about stakeholder input and best management practices. I'd hate to see the city of Houston, the fourth largest city in the nation, uh, use outdated and expensive technology. Uh, I don't think that's what's being proposed, but the mayor said he's going to talk about it, not from the research I have. Uh, I'm looking I, forward. It's going to be a beautiful thing. I can assure you we have a look. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be gotten, beautiful, Ms. We've Spike. gotten responses from all over, the, all yeah. over, and it is about technology and innovation and uh, inclusion of glass and all of that, but I'll speak yeah. more to that to, uh, tomorrow as I, as I lay it out. And, Councilman, and, and Mayor, wrapping okay. up my photo bell ring, I just want to say you may want to get more accurate information, Ms. Spike. You're going to like this. I really believe it if you care about recycling. Thank you, ma'am. I do. Thank yeah. you. Yes, ma'am. Councilman, one second, one second, one second, one second. <laughs> Councilman, we're starting. Thank you for coming down. I just had a question. When you say best management practices, what it, do you have any specifics as like two or three that you're, you're, you're concerned about? Well, automation, <laughs> infrastructure, um, leveraging fees that are fair, that don't burden the uh, disenfranchised of our community, um, siting. In, in locations that are away from human and environmentally sensitive habitats. Okay, so you don't have any specific examples of your concerns in the past where we've gone down the wrong path? Or, well, I would like to see recycling that includes more materials, not just the current plastic and the metal and All the right. paper. I'd like to see industrial composting. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I agree with you. I agree with you on all of those things. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, Ms. Rebecca Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez. It's coming down. To be followed by Ms. Roseanne Barron. Ms. Rodriguez. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, everyone here, for your public service. I just have a. a comment I would like uh, to see City Council affirm the resolution that all the people of Houston are de uh, deserving of affordable health care, something I'm very concerned about. And I'd like to see um, an affirmation that all workers who work 40 hours in the City of Houston uh, also receive, are entitled to uh, benefits regarding uh, the 40-hour week. So I'm not asking for anything specific. I'm just expressing uh, concern that affordable health care is very important. Thank you. Council Members, Council Members starting. Ma'am, thank you for coming down. I appreciate it. Um, are you, are, is there a concern that one of our full-time employees is qualified and is not getting benefits that they deserve? No, ma'am. It, it's, 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 it's just a general statement? It's just a generalization, ma'am. I don't have... Okay. Anything very just want to make sure specific. that we're uh, yes, yes, not overlooking something. Thank yes, you so much. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Uh, Barron or Barron, Ms. Barron. She's coming. 
to be followed by Ms. Sharon Alexander. Sharon. Hi, thank you for Hello. having me. Uh, Mayor Turner and members of the council, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Roseanne Barone and I'm the new program director for Texas Campaign for the Environment. Um, so I know that you all have worked very closely with my predecessor, Melanie Scruggs, in the past, and so I've taken on her position and I'm very excited to work with you all. Um, and, uh, and these are my comments on uh, the proposed single stream recycling contract. And first and foremost, I know that we share the same goal of making recycling accessible to as many uh, Houston residents as possible and so I hope that the new contract will be able to uh, as we expand recycling to areas and uh, residents who don't currently have it such as uh, apartments or businesses uh, that we can incorporate um, some of these concerns in the contract um, just in Improving recycling where we all live, work, and play. So the two kind of uh, goals I hope that we can achieve through this contract is, does it do the most that it can to reduce waste that's going into the landfill? And does it do this in a way that financially makes sense for taxpayers and for the city budget? Um, so I hope that this contract um, will bring back glass. Um, that obviously is, uh, would be a huge, huge step right there in the right direction. And that it will include more types of plastic. Um, and in addition, uh, regarding other materials, um, you know, 15 years is a long time for a contract. So, um, you know, we're, we're planning for ambitious uh, diversion driven goals here. So we hope to have the contract flexible enough to be able to incorporate materials as technology changes and as the commodity market changes. I know that other cities have adopted, uh, included um, different materials like aluminum foil and different types of plastic, even baking pans in some cases. So these are all uh, things, materials that, that can be recycled if our contract um, will allow that. Uh, so we really, you know, the city of Houston deserves a contract that's flexible enough to meet its own goals. Um, and I also hope that the contract will be cost effective um, this is a $57 million contract, so um, we hope that it will, you know, include the tonnage fee. Um, if not, then any fee on top of that would be an extra expense. Um, and also, we, we don't want the city to commit to penalties uh, that, uh, you know, would be unforeseen um, at the present moment. So especially, um, you know, as commodities change, the city should be evaluating when these commodities prices change from low to high and in between. Um, but you might still be locked into a processing fee. So hopefully, you know, kind of reminds me of like a, a, a cell phone bill. You know, you don't want to sign up for a whole bunch of hidden fees that you might not anticipate ahead of time. Um, so again, uh, this is, you know, 15, 15 years a long time. Um, uh, and, and how do we make sure that uh, communities and the cities will benefit um, and essentially my last point is that I do hope that we do have opportunities for public input. We had hoped to hear a presentation on the proposed recycling contract this morning. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our council member Robinson. Thank you, Mayor. And um, Ms. Barone, um, considering the shoes that you're filling with your predecessor, Melanie Scruggs, um, I'd like to first of all say welcome thank to this you. chamber. I think I consider her a friend of both council as well as a frequent visitor to our council. So mm -hmm. thank you for volunteering to fill those shoes. And, and considering all that we have to digest, I share a lot of your opinions. I'm curious if you, just to prepare my staff and my own sense of how much reading I have coming forward, can you tell us your position on letter writing? On letter writing, yes. it's a great thing. <laughs> your uh, predecessor wrote a huge volume of letters to us. So I'm just yeah. curious if we can expect <laughs> that. Yes, okay. definitely, absolutely. Okay. All right, well, I continue to pledge that I will do my Fair recycling of all letters that come through. <laughs> after you read them. Yeah, and after them. I read them, not before. Uh, <laughs> Thank well, you. That's right. Thank well, you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman uh, Stoddick. I'm glad you quali quantified or qualified that. Um, Mayor, is, is, I haven't had the opportunity to dig, make a deep dive on all of this, but I assume that as it, with any contract or agreement that we have a right to terminate? or I'm going, there, I'm going to lay it out tomorrow. Well, they're here today to hear about the 15-year concern. Is that not one of the issues? I'm going to lay it out tomorrow. I would assume that there's that they would uh, the department would be smart enough to include that, and if they aren't, then I would not be supporting it. So thank you. Sure, thank you. And changes as well. Sometimes you can be penalized for making changes to a contract as well. Um, and I think we've changes. tried to incorporate many of that. I'm going to lay it out tomorrow. Then it will go to a city, to uh, to a committee, and then we'll we'll. I have comments, and then we'll vote on it. Thank you, Mayor. But I will, mm -hmm. I will lay it out. I'll lay it out tomorrow. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, you very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Okay, Ms. Uh, Alexander, 
Ms. Alexander is not present. Mr. Johnny Moloch. <coughs> Mr. Johnny Moloch to be followed by Mr. Bobby Taylor. Just Only one person at the podium at a time, please, yeah. under the rules of counsel. Mr. Moloch is up first, one person at a time, please. We pass these out? Sure, i give it to you, yeah. Speak over to the mic, please. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Johnny Muller with an organization called Bridging the Digital Divide, and uh, we're here today to um, talk about computer um, park, I mean, computer centers and parks. Uh, recently, uh, well, this year, uh, Councilman Green, uh, we received a case for Kia's grant where we went into uh, the Windsor Village Park um, Community Center and we placed a computer center in there. And then I taught computer literacy to the kids for um, about six months. And um, you guys don't have the pictures yet, but you can see the pictures with Councilmember Green and us with the kids and also um, some of the computers. And um, realizing, no, I never realized I've been in Houston for over 20 years now and um, never realized that those parts existed like that. And kids are there. It's a great program. Kids are there uh, three and four hours a day, every day. And in the summer, they're there um, twice as long. Uh, outstanding young kids there. Those kids need to have access to technology everywhere. So that, that was one part um, because Council Member Green pushed us to go that way because we had put computer centers in other um, areas in his district uh, with the YMC and other, other organizations. But I'm here today to stress the importance of ensuring computer technology in all 60 parks. Um, it's very easy to do. We use recycled computers. It was a great program. Every time I met a parent when I was teaching those kids, the parent would thank me for being there, teaching their kids. Those computer labs can be used for everything from EGED, ESL, senior training, our Read by Five program, our main mission is to ensure kids can read and write by five. Um, so we're, we're trying to push that the city, as soon as possible, get computer centers in all these centers where these kids are every day. President Obama started the Computer Science for All his last year in office because over uh, only 3% of African American and Hispanics were in the IT fields. And um, to have kids at a location for f four or five hours a day or more and not have computers there is a tragedy. So I, it's a great program. It's a great program, those, pro those parks there. But you got the kids there. you got facilities. I think we can easily put computer centers in there. Uh, secondly, I know I've got a minute. We have a Computer Olympics at the University of Houston every year. My partner, Ricky Winslow, uh, Dr. Mills, who is our president, we have this Computer Olympics there for fi 15 years now. Um, the county <laughs> has always had the Street Olympics. We would like the city of Houston to adopt our Computer Olympics where we have 400 kids coming from 2 years old to 12 years old to compete on computers in educational events. Thank you, sir. Uh, Your one, time has expired. One Thank second. You. Councilman Mo uh, Boykins. Thank you, Mayor. Johnny, good to see you and Dr. Mills always. I, my days at Texas Southern. Uh, when we were trying to learn how to operate computers, you were running the shop back then, and you taught me uh, how to not be intimidated by computers way back when. So I want to thank you. Dr. Mills, it's always good to see you. Uh, and I want to commend Council Member uh, Larry Green as well uh, for his support of your program. I, I do want to ask a question. Did, did I make a donation as well? Yes. You, okay. uh, for I just kind of like to hear my name being mentioned sometimes, too. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, we're classmates too, so but uh, also Cherry was with classmates. No, no, I've said that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I couldn't cheat off his paper. He was too smart. Um, but th th seriously, I think what you were asking, Johnny, we talked about a little bit. You want to um, see with, I assume, in the multi service centers, and I have four in my area, three or four mm -hmm. uh, in my area, uh, during the summer or after school, you would like to see computer labs 
being placed Every one in those. Them. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Have you talked to uh, Judith Stepetch in the mayor's office who handles education for the city? Uh, we've emailed a little okay. bit. Mm -hmm. She understands. She truly gets it and gets education. Mm -hmm. But I want to see if we can, you know, I know from our little limited resources we get from CASE, uh, that we can stretch it a little bit more uh, with some of the programs. Once we can see, I hadn't looked at the results from the first one, mm -hmm. but I know if you and Dr. Mills involved, it's a successful program. But so we can we can spread it um, to some of the other multi-service centers. So I, I do want to chat with you about that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, let Councilmember Green know he ain't the only one in this game here. Mm -hmm. No, no, you did Villa Americana, and also you put computers at uh, MLK for it. So I'm just having fun with Larry. Councilmember Green. Thank you, Bear. Uh, thank, I'd like to thank my uh, colleague, uh, Councilmember Borkins, for seeing the light and, and following uh, good leadership. Let me just say, uh, Ms. Bolock, let me first of all, let me say thank you. Uh, you came to us uh, with an idea about putting um, computer labs in non traditional places, uh, apartment complexes, uh, low, low income complexes, uh, parks. And it's been an overwhelming success. And uh, under your leadership, and not only getting them involved with the kids in their area, but also kids around the city when they do their computer Olympics, and really providing them the training that they need so that they can use that when they're in, in class and what have you. So I want to say thank you for, for, for the vision, and thanks for implementing the vision. I know that uh, your objective is to uh, have these in every parks or every public facility we can for those kids that don't have the opportunity or don't have internet at home. I know one of the challenges the Parks Department has had is with regard to internet co connectivity. And so, Mayor, I guess what I, I would ask is when we look at our service providers, uh, I know there's a contract outstanding of which I'm going to use some council service money to bring in hot spots in some of these different uh, public facilities and that will help so it won't come out of the Parks Department uh, budget, but maybe we should try to see if we can include uh, that when we negotiate these huge contracts. Uh, but at any event, I appreciate you um, um, setting up these computer labs. Uh, we set them up for kids, but what we're finding out now at Windsor Village is that the seniors are using them throughout the day because they don't have the, the, the opportunity to have uh, uh, connectivity. Uh, so it's just been a really, uh, um, uh, uh, win for uh, the entire community. So thank you for what you're doing, and I'll continue to work with you uh, to see if we can get more uh, access to, to more people. Thank you. Thanks. Councilmember thank Council Starnick. Thank you so much. I think this is very, very important. Um, it's, in order to have a level playing field, you have to have the technology skills to, to move forward. You have to have that foundation. Um, from someone that in a different generation, even in high school, starting with basic and Fortran programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as that eyebrow goes up. <laughs> I just showed my age. But it's very important to me that this, the, the kids understand and have that same access. I know Comcast offered um, in-home Wi-Fi for a re very reduced rate. Um, but I think this is important, too, that they have that opportunity in, um, in our, our city facilities, if at all possible. Mayor, I, I, I know that um, our libraries have gotten a lot of technology and gaming right. and different things to engage the kids in programming, but I also think that there's, there's still some gaps. If we could um, fill those gaps, I am very much about that. If we could have maybe a, a resource um, inventory of what they do and do not have that, or what some have and some don't have, I think that might be a benefit to all of us that are looking for ways to, to reinvest back into our communities. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Okay. Is, is there a motion to extend? No, no, move. Move, second. Any objection? Yeah, chair is not granted. And we are looking at um, some um, addition, working with some additional companies to establish connectivity all throughout the city, yeah. all throughout. Um, um, and that would include our parks as well. But that, that's a, that is a high priority for us. Okay. Councilmember Kubosh. Well, Mayor, I, I think with what you just said, you just answered my question. I, so long as you're involved in this and you're uh, you you know the companies that, that may be able to help and assist and also when I heard him talk about the computers being used computers I I mean I, 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 there are companies that I know that will 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 give and donate uh, to, to, to things like this and there's nothing any more frustrating than to get on a computer that doesn't work right and uh, but uh, anyway right. I, I really appreciate it because I've seen my grandkids do things uh, 
that I, I, I still am not able to do on the computers. And I, I really appreciate your helping them. And Mayor, I think this is, ought to really be a lead we should take as a city. Thank you. Well, thank you. I would tell you, we're taking a look at taking one of our existing departments and even turning it into like technology and innovation de de department uh, because that's, this is just where we are. It's the wave of the future. And if we don't stay ahead, uh, I mean, every day there's a new technology coming out every single, every single day. And uh, one way of reaching them is through our parks and other areas. So we've got to create hot spots all throughout the city. You so, know, Mayor, that kind of segues into our trip to Israel when you said so. smart cities and, and the things that we heard and, and, the, and, and all the presentations. I'm just really excited that, that, that this is coming. Okay. Uh, Council Member Cisneros. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the connectivity is so important. It, um, I, I funded um, Wi-Fi and new computers at Independence Heights um, uh, Park. And so it, that was through the library, though. It wasn't, I, I funded the library who, who put that there. It wasn't through the Parks Department. So that's council district service dollars can be used that way. Um, there also, there's a pilot program that the library has right now. It's not everywhere, but it's some of the libraries, you can check out a, a, um, a Wi-Fi hotspot and take it home. And it will allow access for, I think, up to 10 devices. Um, so that's something that's, that's relatively new. Maybe not everyone's heard about that yet. Um, and then um, I'm also hosting uh, Tech Connect fairs at the libraries. That, you know, to, we just we've had two of them. We have two more coming up. But the whole point is to introduce young people to all the amazing resources that the libraries have that aren't widely known. There's a lot of programs and um, and applications and things that are there, and, and people that are, that know how to use them and you know connect them. Um, that, that opens up a whole new world for, for young people that maybe don't have that at home. Yeah, well, I agree with you 100%, but you guys got them at the parks every day. Yeah. So they're going to be there, so I'm just encouraging them. Oh, I agree. I'm with computers you. computers there where they're at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everything. Now, yep. Also, we have a, more, a report that I can send you in more detail if you're interested in digital inclusion for the city, that we, uh, our ideals and stuff about it, how it would work. Okay, and uh, Council Member Robinson. Thank you, Mayor. And Mr. Mollick, you, if you've really touched the nerve here on our, my colleagues, I think this oh, is you. really great timing, and I would love to get that, uh, mm -hmm. that digital copy. We're actually meeting tomorrow as a council for the Quality of Life Committee. Uh, and, Mayor, my sense is, once again, this is right up your complete community's uh, concept, what his, uh, we're advocating as a city to consider where our neighborhoods and communities might be incomplete. We're better than in our uh, multi-service centers and throughout the city with libraries and over the summer when our young people, uh, my daughter included, needs more involvement and engagement. And uh, I'd love to consider how we can support you. You know, what are our neighborhoods that need to be completed in providing Wi-Fi, in completing uh, computer training, all the things that you and this program represents. So please count me in and help us circulate that amongst our colleagues. I will, and our, our Computer Olympics is July 28th at University of Houston, so uh, we would love for the city to get more involved in that because the county has the Street Olympics. Excellent, thank you again. Thank, thank, you. thank you, it was good seeing you on Sunday. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Mills is gonna speak about that. All right. Hey, Mr. R.J. Bobby Taylor is not present. Mr. Robert Williams. Mr. Williams, okay, will be followed by Ms. Cynthia uh, Hall. Oh, what was that? Oh, okay, I thought that was thunder. <laughs> Okay, Ms. Williams, hello. Hi there. Um, my, again, my name is Robert Williams, and I, uh, I'm coming to you all to talk to everyone about uh, the health and issues that I have with Section 8. And, um, but before I do that, I just want to let you all know a little bit about myself. I've been involved with the city, uh, like volunteering throughout the years, ever since I've been disabled. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Does your chair go, does your chair rise? No. Okay. That technology. Can you get a little closer? The okay, let me get a little closer. We can raise that up and get under it if you need to. Okay. Yeah. I'm bringing this thing down. 
Is the chair underneath the, the podium? Is that why you can't? Yeah, but he's about to hit the board. Well, why don't you pull yeah. the chair out? Get, get a little closer. The board. Okay. Is, okay. You want to make sure we can hear I'll it. try to talk a little louder okay. as well. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, again, Robert, my name is Robert Williams, and I'm calling, I'm coming over here to talk about housing, a housing issue with Section 8. Are you able to hear me a little better? Yes. Okay. And uh, before I do so, I've been, I've been involved with the uh, city of Houston, been volunteering from the juvenile detention centers, from even from Kim Og way back in the 90s at the anti-gang uh, sports and stuff. And I've been very fortunate to have been blessed to do so ever since I had a car accident. So I try to try to be as productive as I can possibly can. Uh, but doing so, uh, I've been very blessed to have the assistance of, of the uh, subsidized housing with at Section 8. And uh, it's been a real big blessing for me. That's been, uh, you know, allowed me to be as independent as I can possibly can. Otherwise, I would not be able to afford living by myself. Okay, uh, but fast forward in a little bit. Um, they have a lot of issues there. That I've tried to, uh, this past um, maybe two weeks, about a month ago, I, it was uh, time for me to re get recertified, and which I did turn in my packet, which uh, includes a lot of things that I need to do, you know, go to the pharmacy, doctors, uh, get so many people sign this and that, blah, blah, blah. I did all of that, and I turned it in. They gave me a receipt, which I have with me now. Uh, two weeks afterwards, they uh, I received a letter or notice in the mail telling me that it's my second warning and threatened me, you know, that, you know, that I need to get that filled out. And, of course, I within, yeah, called and I couldn't get the one. I went down there and I redid the whole information. Again, I went back, you know, get the reward letter, did all of what I needed to do. And I went there uh, and I turned in my packet again. I wanted to speak to someone down there. Uh, of course, it pushed me to the side, and I waited for hours to wait for, you know, for somebody to talk to me, but nobody would. So like I said, I tried to. They gave me another receipt, which I have with me as well, stating you know, that everything that I, that I turned in is absolutely it's all I need, and that it's all complete. Well, last week, the third notice telling me that this is my final and notice threatened me that that they will uh, take me, take the privileges away of subsidized housing if I don't get that filled out. And I am really, I have, uh, I have no faith of me filling out this information again and taking it down there again for them to uh, lose it again. So I really need someone to help me with this. Rhonda, Rhonda, will you, will you uh, walk him I mean, work, work through the process with him so he doesn't have to keep going back and forth. Um, you've gone twice? I've, yes, sir. I've uh, I turned in the required information twice. And, and they told you both times that everything was okay? Absolutely. I even had someone down there to assist me and go over all the information, and they all agreed that they was all I needed. Both times I went through the same. Okay. Then what? We'll, well, we will take it from here for you, okay? Now, you've gone twice. You don't need to go a third time and a fourth time. So, um, Ron, if you'll make sure that um, Houston Housing uh, stamp, approve, whatever that they need to do uh, and get him, get him done, completed, so, so it's not, it, we're not dra dragging things on unnecessarily. So just, just, just stay with him, and then, and then you, all, you all let me know that is done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Apologize for having to bring you, but for you having to come down here to deal with it, but we'll deal with it. No problem. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yes. And just run and just let me know when it's done. Okay. Hey, Ms. Hall. Ms. Cynthia Hall is not present. Ms. Catherine Griffin Grignon. You're next, but only one person at the podium at a time. You need your schedule next. Okay. All right. I just wanted Dr. Swisser to come first. Yeah, he's the next. Okay. He's next. It's been moved. It's been moved. Been moved and second to reverse the order. Any objection? Chair is none. 
Thank you. You can take a seat. Thank you so much. And Madam Secretary, call up uh, uh, Reverend Swisher. Okay, Mr. Berner, Dr. Bernard Swisher. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come and say thank you. <clears throat> I want to thank the Mayor for allowing our agency to honor him on today, along with former um, County Judge Robert Eccles. We had more than 600 persons yeah. in that luncheon. And that affords Career and Recovery Resources the resources to serve people. I want to acknowledge Council Member uh, Dwight Barkins, who changed his flight on <coughs> Sunday to come and to be with, with me on a radio uh, broadcast. Uh, they wouldn't allow him to come in because his name was not on the agenda. But he, cha he was with you, Mayor, but he changed his flight to come with us to help promote that event. We have a nonprofit. We serve with a lot of other nonprofits. We were with the mayor on yesterday. And the way we can help you as council members, as being, being partners in serving people. And mayor, I just want to thank you for all that you thank do. You. It's amazing how you're all over this city. You don't know it, but tomorrow I'll be with you again. Uh, at the Rotary Club. And, nice. and Mayor, just thank you. Councilman uh, Borkins, thank you. Councilman Borkins not only came and, and spoke, but before he left, he left a contribution uh, for the agency. We have people that have disabilities. We have people that have behavioral health issues, substance abuse, drug and alcohol. We help those folks that are homeless. We help them find jobs. We help individuals that are seniors who thought they could retire, and all of a sudden they feel like, I don't have enough money and I need employment. We're there to help, and I just wanted to come and say thank you. My <laughs> colleague, Kathy Griffiths, will allow me to tell you that she is one of our store clients. And Kathy is a good example of paying it forward. Kathy doesn't mind us telling you, we s served her some years ago as a client. Now she's out helping others. I just wanted to thank all of you. Thank, thank you. you so very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Swisher. For, thank, for Dr. Swisher, before you leave, um, thank you, and um, certainly appreciate the the honor. But I tell you, uh, in honor of me, you honor the entire city and everybody that works for the city. Yes. Uh, so thank you so very much, and I hope y'all raised a lot of money for the for your programs, yes. you know, today. And it was good to be with uh, former County Judge Robert Elkos. Uh, as well. Uh, Councilmember Borkins. Thank you, Mayor. Dr. Sw uh, Mayor said it best, Dr. Swisher. We want to thank you and agency. Man, you are God sent to people. You. Your heart is in the right place. You've done an outstanding job with uh, the center and you, you've changed so many lives because of your passion you. and your commitment. And then you make it easy for people to give to you because of what you're doing to help others. Yes. When you talk about Kathy Griffin, who happens to live in District D, yes. uh, that's what it's about. You know, Kathy is now one of, probably on an international level she of changing is. girls' lives. That's right. And turn them around because of the help you gave them. I want to thank the mayor. The mayor has the Turnaround Houston program. I have the Second Chance program. Yes. And we are all in this together trying to solve the issues and the problems of people uh, with mental illness and people that are homeless and people that made mistakes in the past and just need a second chance. But it starts with you, man. I just want yeah. you to know, Dr. Swisher, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And I want to clone you, make certain you <laughs> stick around for a few, about 20, 30 more years. <laughs> and uh, thank you for That'd what you've done for nice. my friend Kathy and, uh, and others. So thank you so much, sir. Well, thank you. And as the mayor said, thank all of you. And we thank the city. Uh, we're building a new building. And we're adding 15,000 square feet. We're doing that because of your support. Thank you very, very thank much. Thank you. One, one second. Uh, Council Member Stronic. I want to just take this opportunity to thank you for all you do. I know you're very dedicated to our city and you volunteer above and beyond. I know that uh, Ms. Griffin Grignon is um, very capable of saying very much for herself. She's not shy at all, That's as right. we all know. But it takes, it takes leadership in that role, and we appreciate you very much for that. And it's a pleasure to work with you with the mayor's advisory and, safety council. And I appreciate your work on that as well. That's very important to all of us. Thank and that is a great group.
It Mayor, is. that is that have you visited already? Yes. I love that group. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Miss Ramona Toliver is in that group. Yes. <laughs> and she keeps everything going. And to, and give your wife my regard. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Also, Okay, Kathy Griffin to be followed by Ms. Michelle Williams. Dr. Ph.D., psychiatrist, psychiatrist, uh, <laughs> psychoanalyst. Uh. <laughs> Recovery coach, peer specialist. And I can't tell you what Anna Russell named me back in the day. <laughs> First of I all, I want to say hello to all of the council members and mayor. I want to congratulate you for being a barrier breaker as myself because I want everyone to know that this barrier breaker award thing has a whole nother meaning because the city of Houston allowing me when I was a client in career recovery resources to become the outreach director for council member Peter Brown in at large position one was a barrier breaker and had it not been for a career recovery they allowed me to keep my personality, but they did teach me how to respond to the communities, the public, how to handle adversities without having to run back to drugs and the street life and prostitution and all of the poor old me. I need to pour me another drink, pour me another hit. It took that from me. It allowed me to understand that in working with the public, and in a career of lifetime recovery, that there are gonna be those who don't like you. But if you're doing what you're supposed to do and sticking to what is right for you, then if you don't have haters, something's wrong. I'm just saying. Sounds like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, since you're a barrier breaker, Mayor, and I'm a barrier breaker, if you got haters, say hallelujah. And I want, I want to also let you know, just for the year of 2016, Career Recovery Resources has serviced 13,954 clients, and 1,640 were substance abuse clients. They have serviced 2,200 with HIV and Hep C testing, and they have placed 1,100 25 individuals in job placement. And had it not been for what they taught me and being able to communicate with me on a level that I could find out that I wasn't and I, I wasn't hopeless, I will stand on the top of any mountaintop forever and praise Career Recovery Resources because it did help me break all types of barriers. And I want to thank you all for your time and thank services. You. Wait one second, Councilman Borkins. Three words. I love you. Woohoo! I love you too, right, Councilman. I want you to know that. Thank you so much. Right, and Councilman Mastardic. Kathy, I thank you so much. Um, I've witnessed firsthand, you know, the work you do and, and uh, the vigils downtown and you know, your personal time with so many of these ladies that you work for and work with to make a difference. They've, they've been, they've been um, given a lot of obstacles in their lives and it takes all of us working together to make sure that they have the opportunities. And that's something that I really would uh, love to talk to you about is we've got a lot of people that I believe need those opportunities yes. that are on the streets right now and um, they're not making good choices. And I, I um, the mayor hears from me regularly about the issues in uh, my community, about folks that I think need these services and are not going to, to, to do it willingly because they're not in their right mind, to be quite frank. And it concerns me. I, 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 I told someone the other day I'm going to end up watching this individual die on the street. And I don't Call want me. To, huh? Call I, I'm me. I'm going to. I got my cape. Call I'm me. With, I'm ready because I've, I've gone through the channels and I've, I've done all the things that you're supposed to do, and I, I just, I can't, I'm not going to sit back and watch, so. And I want you all to know that presently I'm working with about 3,700 uh, individuals, uh, Harris County, 
uh, jail, Texas Department of Corrections, and the Santa Maria Hostel, and I have some that come through Career Recovery Resources. Um, and this is the first time, Mayor, in my life that I've ever run into individuals. This is very important because these are not women and men that just come out of the ghetto. They, they, they are being targeted on every level. And the younger they are, they come to me and say, I want to be in the sex industry. This is the first time I've ever witnessed that. And we, uh, this whole epidemic is changing almost every two weeks. So I really, Mayor and Council Members, need to come in and let you all know what the flavor is with this human trafficking issue, sex trafficking issue, because I don't want us to do the wrong thing. And had I not gone through career recovery, I got to keep it on career recovery. Uh, <laughs> Had I not gone through it, I wouldn't have known how to ease that in right now. <laughs> mm. But I'm begging to have a sit down, please, because there's some new developments that are, are I have to talk to you all about some well, stuff. Well, we value your opinion and we appreciate you coming down. And once again, we appreciate Thank you so much. career and recovery. Thank, Thank you. you so Thanks, much. Kathy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ms. Uh, Williams, Ms. Michelle Williams to be followed by Ms. Deborah Elaine Allen. Good afternoon, Mayor Council. Good afternoon. My name is Michelle. I'm a native, native Houstonian, and I'm here on behalf of the drivers for the TNC companies in the city of Houston. We serve our community with pride, and uh, we enjoy getting uh, the, our clients to their destination safely and efficiently. I come here in reference to the TNC parking lot out at the airport. That we, we, first of all, I'd like to say thank you, and we are grateful for that lot to, to be able to utilize that. Um, but at the same time, that lot, I believe it's made for 96 to 98 vehicles, and the airport continues to hand out the uh, airport stickers that are required to park in that lot. And every morning when I wake up to go to the airport, since I live just a couple of miles from there, I look on my app and I see 200 cars parked in that lot. That is not only dangerous, it is backs up traffic on Will Clayton and Lee Road. Um, the airport operations has to come out three to four times on a daily basis and block the actual lot and it backs up traffic all the way around Will Clayton, down Will Clayton toward 59, and into the intersection of Will Clayton and Lee Road. It's, it's dangerous, and now some of the newer drivers are parking on the side <coughs> in the grass on Lee Road so as not to get knocked out of the queue. These are the, so, ve these are the vehicles for hire? Uh, it is the uh, rideshare drivers for the five rideshare companies that are operating here. Uber, Lyft, etc. Yeah, the so, ones that the ones that went to the state to get us out the business of regulating yes, them. Yes, yes, but but the yes, sir, and I, I, sir. Yeah, unfortunately. yeah, you know. I, uh, but have you have you talked about it with the with the state? I, I have not because that is a city lot. I understand. And I was. Going but they to went to but they went to Austin to take us out the business. I understand HB 100. I know what you're referring to. That's right. And, and my question would be. Would because it's city property, would the mm -hmm. state still be over that? No, the, we control the city property, but the and state gets the money for overseeing oh, and, and, you all, and you know we have right. to take the resources from the city to manage it. But go ahead on. Let me let me hear you out. Though. Okay, me, thank you. Me, I appreciate that. Let me hear you out. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to suggest okay. something for okay. that to, to cure this, because okay. as it gets hotter and in such a small space with so many people, right. people get agitated, and there's you know they're arguing over the parking lots. There's been violence out there a couple of times. So you said there's a limit. There's a limited amount of spaces, correct? And there are more vehicles crowded into over those spaces. Over double, correct. And so okay. my suggestion is, since the airport is not getting revenue for issuing those stickers, to stop issuing those stickers and wait until some of those dri drivers kind of drop out of that scene and whenever operation sees that there are spaces becoming available, then they can start handing out stickers again. 
Okay, let me, let me check into it. I'm yeah, there was more of it. <laughs> okay, oh, Count, Councilman Mastardic. I mean, do you have a, just a sentence? Because I have a question. Y yes, I just there's another lot next door also that could be opened up that's not being For utilized. Overflow? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm concerned. I mean, I'm. They expect us to. They took. See, I'm concerned because I've, I've I put a lot of t personal time and energy into the amendments for the disabled, and um, so I'm I'm a little bitter. I'll, yeah. You know, I'm pretty pretty frank. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> just a little. And so with that, you know, we're not protecting the, the persons with disabilities according to the way it's been structured, according to what I know at this point. Correct. To your director. That is correct. From your director, mayor, and. I, um, now we're talking about public safety and impeding traffic and adding to our burden of public safety that we already have. So I, I don't know if we enable it by opening another lot as an overflow or, or put it back, like you said, Mayor, that you implied, or sort of about putting it back to the state and let them, you know, they want to handle things, but that'll be how long before they can? Uh, it'll be uh, 2019. Yeah. So, you know, once again, you know, careful what you wish for. And I'm not saying you, I'm just saying those that are involved. Right. And, um, you know, locally, we would like to, to help and make it right. But I don't know, um, once again, the unintended consequences, again, of, you know, opening another lot and then costing us more money to monitor and more, you know, burden on us to enable a business, you know, that didn't want us to, to work with us. So I don't know. That's and then, as frank and as I me, can be. And let me, what complicates it, it, it would, it, it certainly would be important to have inspectors out there to kind of monitor. Mm -hmm. But Absolutely. because we're not getting the revenue, I understand. we end up having to lay off 12 to 13 yes, employees. Yes, sir. So, I understand that. And now to, to oversee it, yes. it's going to require additional inspectors and workers out there that we have to pay for when the state's getting the revenue and we're having to I understand your frustration mayor I do I really do that's why I suggested stop handing out the stickers since no one is getting the revenue right, for but, that. We, but we do need f for public safety issues we to do nothing is not an answer correct okay so it is a city property correct and we have a now we have a jam that's taking place and we're gonna have to provide pool personnel to oversee the operation, um, let's, let, me, let us take a look at it. All right. Thank you, but sir. Thank you. Those are unintended consequences. Hey, Ms. Deborah Lane Allen is not present. Ms. Ruth Randall. Ms. Randall. Ms. Randall. Ms. Randall is coming. To be followed by Mr. James Parks Galvan. Good afternoon. My name is Ruth Randall. Um, my concern is uh, the food for the homeless that is under the bridge by Minnie Maid and the ones under by Sears. I go and spend time with them, which I, for Mother's Day I spent the whole weekend out there. I go on there Friday and I come back home maybe Sunday or Monday. Uh, they're not getting fed on the weekends. Uh, they are not, and I would suggest that, I, my suggestion is that through the school year, the school throws away a lot of food, a lot of food, that a law be passed that they give them the food that's being thrown away from the lunches. I know myself that my kids and my grandkids doesn't, do not eat the food that the schools give to them. They want lunch for themselves. So I would say, ask that we would pass the legislation the law that they would give the food to the homeless. It's a lot of people, a lot of places in Houston that has food that they're not even using, they're throwing away. So why is it that we can't give the homeless the food? Another thing is that uh, we see that we move them back, further back from, from the uh, Minute Maid uh, to live. But the thing about it is that when we out there, it's not all about people that's on drugs. It's not all about people that's, um, some of the people can't read. They don't understand what the people are telling them. Even when the police come out, they don't really understand. They're scared, 
they don't understand what's being said to them. It takes us to go back be uh, and behind the police to tell them what's being said. Like we get a lot of them to go to the sobering center to get their ID, to get their homeless letters, to go to the hospitals. So we, cause we are concerned about we want to work with the city to be out there when we're out there to know what's going on and what the city's plans on for the homeless. We know that's not the city's responsibility, but we as people want to know and want to be a part of what's happening with the homeless um, and with the city. Vice Mayor Patel Davis. Thank you, Mayor. Ms. Renner, I, I don't have an answer for you. I just want to say uh, I appreciate you and your hard work. I understand this is an, uh, an issue that you, that you hold close to your heart. I understand that uh, constituents actually in, in Nakers homes on your street that you are helping uh, with their situation. And I, all I can say is that we're going to continue to work hard to try to figure out how do we uh, in, in or put our hands, get our hands around the homeless uh, issue that we have in the city of Houston. Uh, mayor's committed to it, council members committed to it, the previous mayor has committed to it with some uh, apartments. And uh, we're looking to do the same thing and also with the wraparound services. And we just have to keep working on it. It's not something that we're going to end in a day. And as for HISD, we can't tell them what to do. Uh, they have their own governing board. Uh, you would maybe ask one of our trustees. I think our trustee may be Rhonda Skiller Jones in that area to uh, see if that's an option. So uh, maybe you have to work with them or other entities about the food that they have and, and be able to distribute that in, in some, some type of manner. So again, thank you for coming out and I appreciate your hard work. Okay, can I ask you another question? Uh, we also have some of the people under the bridge that lost their vouchers. You know, when the vouchers were given out to them? Yes, ma'am. At first of the year. You mean physically lost the paper or they don't have the voucher no, 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 no. assigned the, to them? The they lost their homes. They, you know, they're supposed to go to the, go find right. their houses. Right. And they lost their vouchers. The vouchers are no good. Right. And they're under the bridge. We have one man that's partially blind. We have two or three that has heart, had strokes. One with no legs, they're under the bridge. We have veterans that's under that bridge. Oh. Well, let me, yes, yes, sir. if I can respond directly to him that, and because I, I want to thank, I think it was last week on the, on the city council agenda, uh, we voted to, uh, to supplement uh, the monies that were lost through the federal program on vouchers uh, to insert money now in to assist those individuals who had the vouchers, but the vouchers were no were not were no longer good. Okay. Okay. But we we have now found, um, and it, well, I won't say found. We have re have directed about 2.4 million dollars back into those programs to make those to work to make those vouchers now good. So um, I certainly will. As all of us here, would love to work with you. You're out there also on the street. Uh, talking to uh, uh, many people out there who are homeless, and I would ask, um, I would want to join with you, and I think t t working together, I think we can help to move people to better places in their lives. Yes. For those with those vouchers, they are ready to go. Right. They just don't have the financial means, and I think we've we are filling the gap. Okay. And so uh, let me let me make sure that I follow up with you, um, Sean. Which Sean, if you uh, uh, stay in touch with Ms. Randall, and you know, I like to have you come in and visit with me, okay? Uh, so we that we can work together to help move these people out. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Vice Mayor Pro Tem Day. Okay, Mr. James Parsfeld Vaughn is not present. Mr. Patrick Taylor. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor is not here. Is not present. Uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Paula Hernandez. Paula Hernandez. To be followed by Ms. Elsa Caballero. Hola, mi nombre es Paula Hernandez. Es la tercera vez que hablo con ustedes. Por más de seis años he trabajado como persona de limpieza como subcontratista de Maclemon. Después de presentar mi queja de robo de salario y hablar con ustedes, me despidieron. 
creo que han tomado represalias contra mí por ejercer mi derecho de poner una queja bajo la ordenanza de robo de salario de la ciudad. El Consejo aprobó la, la ordenanza para proteger a los trabajadores como yo y, y asegurarse de que nos paguen todas las horas que trabajamos. Quiero creer el proceso de la ciudad puede ayudar a los trabajadores como yo. Para mí perder mi trabajo fue algo muy difícil. He estado, he estado pasando más de dos meses, ha pasado dos meses después de que mi queja y ya uno se ha resuelto. No creo que es justo que mi, emplea, que mi empleado me ofrezca a mí y a mis compañeros mucho de lo que nos merecemos. Es por eso que estoy hablando con mis compañeros de trabajo que están aquí presentes para hacer un sindicato. Estamos trabajando juntos en CIU, Texas, para poner fin a la explotación de los trabajadores en Houston. Hay que hacer algo al respecto. Muchos de mis compañeros de trabajo son inmigrantes y todos somos trabajadores de bajos ingresos. Es hora de que el ayuntamiento se asegure de que los contratistas que están a cargo de la limpieza de la ciudad pública sean responsables. No debería haber lugar para la explotación de Houston. Gracias. Yeah, gracias. Uh, let, me, let me say that um, there's the compliance division within the Office of Business of Opportunity with Calicia Wright uh, that should be uh, investigating this particular matter. Uh, asked her who did she file her complaint with. Con quien uh, hizo su queja? De mi despido? Sí. Con el gobierno federal. With the federal government. With the federal government. Okay. But I would also... Um, I need, her to, I need someone to assist her in filing her complaint, uh, sending it over to the Office of Business Opportunity. And Felicia Wright is the director of OBO. And within OBO is the Compliance Division. And I would like the Office of Business Opportunity, OBO, uh, to investigate her complaint okay. uh, on the Compliance Division. And then let, let me know what they, what they find. Okay. El, uh, el alcalde Uh, pide que haga una queja con las oficinas de, de, de Business Opportunity de la ciudad de Houston uh -huh. um, para poder avanzar su, su caso, porque el, que la queja que hizo usted fue con el federal. Uh, uh -huh. Le vamos a dar instrucción ahorita. And at the same time, if, if, if um, uh, Elsa, if SEIU um, have complaints of other employees, if you'll also forward them forward uh, to us, And then let, let me have Calicia Wright, the director, uh, to pursue those complaints. Um, it'd be much quicker than just waiting on the, on the feds to take some action. So let us, let's take a, let's take a look and see what's happening there. Okay. okay. La investigación sería más rápida si la hacemos dentro de la ciudad con las oficinas de, de Business Opportunity. Okay. Uh, entonces vamos a presentarle al director de, de las oficinas de Business Opportunity para oír su queja, ¿ok? Okay. Hold on one second, Councilmember Christie. I have a few questions on this because I, I think a few years ago we, we went through something very similar. Uh, ask her if um, she works for Macklemore or she works for the subcontractor of Macklemore. For the subcontractor JBM. Run by Macklemore. So, is the complaint against Macklemore? Or the is la queja contra Macklemore? Contra los dos. Against both. Okay. Uh, Macklemore has done this job for 17 years, and we have not had any complaints like this before. What is the theft? Describe the theft. Well, this, uh, Macklemore has sido uh, contratista con la ciudad de Houston por 17 años. Usted puede describir el, uh, la, um, la queja. Sí, pues la queja más que todo es porque JBM nos contrata, pero Macklemore es el que le da el dinero para que JBM, en pocas palabras, nos pa no nos pague lo que nos merecemos y no nos dé nuestros beneficios y no nos pague tiempo extra porque el dinero se lo da la ciudad a Maclemon y Maclemon le da dinero a JBN para que JBN en pocas palabras nos encierre por debajo y no nos esté pagando lo que nos merecemos. So um, she's explained that Maclemon receives funds from the city of Houston 
which in turn then pays her as uh, pays JBM uh, the subcontractor which in terms the the benefits and everything that she receives is through JBM and um, pretty much she's trying to explain that they put her under as, as a contractor put her under what do you mean by that uh, I guess as, as contract subcontracting under uh, under JBM okay so your goal is to form a union that's what I'm reading here that is why I'm talking to my former co-workers about forming a union would you like me to usted uh, quiere formar una unión no nada más yo todos mis compañeros que estamos pasando por todo esto por eso es que yo estoy hablando con ellos para poderlo hacerlo en unión para poder tener nuestros beneficios que ustedes saben que nos merecemos she would like to form a union with her and her employees uh, with, uh, co-workers that she works with uh, so that she can receive the, uh, the right benefits for the job so did SEIU bring everybody here today SEIU trajo a todos hoy Sí. Y no nada más estamos peleando por nuestros beneficios, también estamos peleando para que se nos traten como personas que somos y no nos traten porque las compañías también nos tratan muy mal. No nada más se trata del dinero. The most Jewish stand second in the objection and I'm motion is granted. Okay, th this was done a few years ago. And the and the approach was so inconsistent and half truths and innuendos that the employer, not this one, another employer, won a multi-million dollar suit against SEIU, if I'm not mistaken, they've been bankrupt because of that lawsuit. So maybe I'm trying to save time. But for 17 years, uh, this firm, not the sub, but the firm has not had wage theft. And, and, and I've seen it before happen again, the, the technique of trying to take someone down to form a union when they do good work. Now give proof when you file with Carlisa Wright, give proof of wage, wage theft and um, be careful because these companies will come back and say that's not true. Um, give me facts because and I grew up in a union city that and I respected the unions and such, but these techniques that are used against reliable companies, defamation of character that it shouldn't be used. And remember, they were beaten uh, on a similar case, so be careful. Porque ha habido un caso anterior mm -hmm. donde ha habido uh, una queja contra la ciudad mm -hmm. y, y lo, que resucitó, lo que resultó fue que um, se había uh, um, peleado SIU contra ellos mm -hmm. y no, no ganaron el caso. Nada más él le está pidiendo que tenga uh, ocasión haciendo el, el uh, no, la unión. Yo, yo sé perfectamente lo que estoy haciendo porque más que la unión, a lo que están violando nuestros derechos es a mí y a mis compañeros de trabajo. No nada más yo puedo hablar, ellos también tienen mucho que hablar respecto a eso. Como te digo, no nada más de dinero, sino cómo nos tratan en nuestros lugares de trabajo. Y estamos trabajando en un lugar de la ciudad, no estamos trabajando en un lugar del sub, de un subcontratista. She would like to respond by, uh, she's fighting for the benefits uh, and the rights as a worker that works for the city of Houston. Um, not just to be treated as uh, fairly. Uh, she feels like she's been treating, treated unfairly due to the conditions that she's been placed in. Okay, just, just remember, 17 year of favorable contract, so be careful what you go after. Uh, Council Member, Council Member Robinson. A lo mejor 17 años ha pasado más Clemón, pero no ha, nadie se ha atrevido a hablar más que todo. Y ahorita lo estamos haciendo nosotros. A lo mejor ellos tenían los ojos cerrados en decir más Clemón nunca ha hecho nada, porque nadie se había atrevido a hablar frente a ellos. Por eso lo estamos haciendo por lo que estamos pasando. For 17 years um, that that could could have her, could have had occurred with Macklemore, uh, she would not need, need to continue another 17 years. So she's here to fight for it. Muy bien, gracias. Um, 
Señor Hernández, y gracias por estar aquí con tu sindicato, un, uh -huh. un union, y entiendo, ¿eres un miembro, una miembro del union? Estamos peleando por eso. Okay. Si no nos apoyan ustedes, tenemos que nos apoyen atrás, tenemos que buscar que nos apoye. Yo ya tengo seis años pasando por esto. No es que yo empecé a trabajar ayer y ya estoy pasando. Yo tengo seis años trabajando okay. para un edificio de la ciudad. Pues entiendo yo, y mi opinión... Uh, es que lo que dice el alcalde es uh, lo que debes seguir. Ne okay. Su aviso es que necesita afilar otro, uh, ¿qué es la palabra? Um, su queja, con uh, nuestra oficina de oportunidades de negocios. Es uh -huh. OBO, señora Carlicia Ray, está uh -huh. la jefa de esta organización y necesita hacerlo y en compañón a la otra con los federales y okay. entendemos y que tiene vigilancia del proceso y también el alcalde dice que necesita hacerlo con la ciudad en edición a uh, la manera en que ha puesto ya tu queja y está, estamos aquí para decir muy bien y estamos contigo sí. y uh, no debe tener miedo y gracias por la vigilancia y la sindic el sindicato. No espero y en verdad si no resuelvan esto porque es algo muy delicado para nosotros más que todo que somos los trabajadores. Y tenemos mm -hmm. también un entendimiento de ellos. Awesome. Tercera awesome. vez aquí. So awesome. saying, yes. to follow your advice, Mayor, and I, I liked what you said, namely, we're not going to uh, motion well, to extend. extend. Second. Thank you. Object and Essentially, the, my comments were to follow your advice that Carlicia Wright is the director of the OBO, and I think in addition to filing with the feds, the FBI, if that's correct, then that's how she's going to get our attention. And for her to stand with the union uh, strong, and I think uh, we may all have an opinion about SEIU and their history, but I, I think in my opinion, I was suggesting that she be strong, maintain her vigilance, and file according to your instructions. Right. Because what, what I am hearing is that uh, she worked, she didn't receive, the allegation is she didn't receive what she was entitled to with regards to her pay, and because she chose to, spoke, to speak out, she was, she was fired um, in retaliation for speaking out demanding her pay. That's what I am hearing. Porque él entiende que usted está aquí porque retaliaron contra usted cuando usted demandó que le pagaran lo que le de, lo que le debía. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as a result of that, I want her to to file a complaint with the Office of Business Opportunity (OBO) and then allow us to take a, to to investigate it uh, on her behalf. Que nos nos dé chance de de investigar y haga su queja con la oficina de, de negocios uh, de la ciudad. Para que sí le podamos ayudar. Okay. Espero y si hagan eso pronto. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gracias. Okay. Ms. Caballero. To be followed by Ms. Stacy Babino Daigle. Elsa, how are you? I'm good. Thank good. you so much for the time and uh, appreciate it. Uh, Again, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm sorry, I now have to wear glasses to read. <laughs> uh, my name is Elsa Caballero. I'm the president of SEIU Texas. And honestly, I was not planning to speak today. Uh, but I'm here representing a security officer from George Hart Brown Convention Center who was scheduled to speak here today. But unfortunately, as, uh, a little bit over an hour ago, an hour before he had to get here, he began to receive calls from the contractor um, and felt too intimidated to come here. Um, if you remember, about two months ago, we were actually here also with Mr. Saparu Mehat, um, and as we were here in the building, the same company continued to uh, call him and uh, send him text messages. As a result of this, allegations of retaliation, the workers have now filed the charge with the NLRB, and that will continue the process. Uh, just to answer from the other stuff that you said, every, uh, every worker who has talked about uh, issues of wage theft has also filed through the city of Houston's process to make yeah. sure that that doesn't happen. But unfortunately, uh, the targeting continues and their ability to speak uh, diminishes. Uh, and we're here today 
not so much because you know we need you guys to investigate do additional investigation or, or to tell us about the other processes we could take though we appreciate that uh, but uh, but to make sure that you are aware that this is happening to people who actually work cleaning this uh, buildings here and in the airport and in many of the city buildings that they are retaliating just because they're exercising their rights as citizens of this city to come in and talk to you guys about an issue and regardless how you feel about SEIU or whatever the issues you believe you know that happened these workers are not lying regardless on how you try to say that the union is doing this or the union did that when a worker comes and talks to you about being retaliated or losing their job it should be taken seriously. It should also be investigated to make sure that it's right. You cannot say that because a company has been there for 17 years and have worked here and never had a complaint. It might just be because you never heard the complaint. Because if they're afraid of being fired when they say something, then why would they say something? They are now unapologetically unafraid. They're here to talk to you about the issues and they're hoping that the city will support their efforts to unionize and have a union because the band-aids that we put on when we, f we file the charges, the workers get paid, their back pay, doesn't solve the bigger issue which is that the contractors continue to go back to their practices and we hope that the city of Houston will take a look at what those practices are and make sure that they put things in place to have contractors who are going to respect this work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one second. Um, Council Member, well, let me just first, let me just say to you, you know, so we do take the uh, complaints seriously. Appreciate it. Okay. Anytime any employee works and there's a complaint or an allegation that they're not getting paid what they have been promised, that is a serious uh, allegation and we do take it seriously and we are not going to condone that. I don't care who the contractor, who the business is, uh, we're not going to condone it, especially anybody that's doing work uh, for the city of Houston, was the general contractor or it's the sub. So we, you know, we very much do take it very seriously and we want the, we want every, um, all the businesses know that we want, we expect our employees to be treated fairly, uh, to be paid and not to hire them and then underpay them. And we certainly don't want any employee, any employee, retaliated against. And if it's found uh, to be any truth that an employee was retaliated because he or she spoke up and to let us know that they were underpaid or that was wage theft, then that's totally, totally, totally unacceptable. And that employer, that business, should not be doing business with the city of Houston. So let me just let me just uh, emphasize that we do take it seriously. We appreciate people taking the time to come before us, uh, and we do not take that uh, lightly. Thank okay. you. Appreciate Thank you. that. Okay, uh, Councilmember Robinson. Thank you, Mayor. That was well said. And uh, with your authority, it's a lot more powerful than what I wanted to say. But thank you for reiterating my sentiment. Um, and one suggestion, Elsa, and thank you for coming and thank your members for being here. Um, understanding the sensitivity of this situation and how one can compromise one's job uh, for leaking. I'm curious to know if names are being taken, if there are ways perhaps not so much that the union members would uh, um, create instances where they're vulnerable, but if you, as in your role, are a conduit for that, whether there's a mechanism with the OBO, that if there are individuals with any contractor, that we're uh, let known who those are. Uh, so as of uh, even today, I think some of the workers were getting calls from staffers of city council members wanting to get more information. I want to make our organization available to be able to um, get that information to you, let you talk to the actual workers who've been victimized uh, or allegedly victimized, I should say, uh, but some of these practices and we're happy to answer any questions you guys may have um, and provide that information. If I know needed. with, with um Councilmember Gallegos out of town today or, or just absent from our meetings, a lot of the facilities uh, with the city are in District I and perhaps on his behalf, but see, speaking for myself as a member of the board of Houston First, I'd like to know that. There's a lot of contracts that Houston First has as an arm, but an uh, independent 
uh, governmental agency, um, we need to know these things. So I think sure. that's my point, and thanks for being part of letting us know. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very Council much. Councilman Mastani. Oh. Um, I, I don't want to see anyone taken advantage of, and that that's, you know, my grandmother was a, uh, a janitor at, kind of, at school district when she was a uh, single mom with four kids. I don't want to see anyone taken care of, but Mayor, I also want to caution that I don't want anyone leaving the room thinking that because they're hacked off at an employer or a contractor that that automatically, you know, that they're found guilty, you know, the contractor as well. So we have to make sure that the process works. Um, I don't want anyone, if anyone is, you know, t has the nerve to, to take a contract from this city and is taking advantage of any of our Houstonians, then shame on them because they will have the wrath of, I know this mayor, and I know the majority of the council members, so shame on them, but I also don't want to send a message that would get anyone in trouble by retaliating the other direction and targeting any of the contractors because they don't agree with you know, the way they conduct business. So if it's legal, it's legal. If it's illegal, then we definitely want to make sure that it's taken care of and addressed immediately. So I just want to make sure that that was the message that was heard today. It's very important to all of us that everyone um, be, everyone's rights being uh, recognized. Yeah. So uh, I would say that, again, I want to reiterate, we have followed the process. The workers have come in and submitted their proof. Um, the process is going. We don't want the process to take forever because these are, again, workers who make very little money and are hoping to be able to get their money. So the only thing that we would are actually ask is that to make sure that the process doesn't take longer than it needs to take uh, and that these workers are able to get their money. That and I think owed. this is the right thing to do is to highlight it to make sure it's at the top of the pile to be processed Motion as to quickly extend. as possible. Second. Any objection? Chair is none. Motion granted. Oh, that's all I had to say, Mayor, that I do think they're doing the right thing by highlighting it, bringing it to our attention, making sure that it is going through the process, because I know how city government works, too. I've been here long enough, right. or any of the processes of, of government, that it takes too long, especially when you're trying to make groceries, you're trying to get to the grocery store to, to provide for your families, or just make the, the bills. It's too much, too, too short of a window, um, paycheck to paycheck, or even shorter than that, than trying to make the, you know, the bills that you need to survive. So we definitely need to make sure this is, this process is in place and it's moving forward. Do you know as of when the complaint was initially filed? Um, we were here about, uh, I know we were here about two months, a little over two months ago, and we had um, worked with them to get all their information around that time. Okay, so two months ago? Uh, at least. Okay, then let me, we'll follow up on, on it. Uh, Councilmember Borkins. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, and I know you're going to follow up uh, on this process, and I'm glad to to see, um, you know, we're moving forward on it. I just have a couple of questions. If we find, Mayor, I used to have a janitorial service, so I know how it is, and I made clear uh, that I paid the people working for me a little bit above wages, minimal wages during that time. I didn't have a lot of money and a lot of contracts, but I made certain of that because I felt like people were being taken advantage of, and I was not going to be caught up in that category. But my question is this. If we find out that a sub or prime company is underpaying after a complete audit is done, and the facts are out, underpaying people wages and have been doing it for 17 years, one year, whatever the case may be, that we not only find them, we terminate them, and any re revenues that they have in the rears that the city would have to pay them, that we garnish that money to make these people whole that's been taken advantage of, if that's the case, back pay for years. Because that would be a big shame to use companies to come into and, uh, the city of Houston do business if we find out it's true and use our tax dollars to pay a company to take advantage of small businesses. So if we find out if, if Dwight Borkin's company has, I'm making up a number, $500,000 in the rears, that the city of Houston have to pay, and we found out on a complete audit that they've taken advantage of a company, maybe we need to consider not paying them that with the audit findings and reimburse these people who've been taken advantage of and make certain they don't do, they're suspended or won't be able to do work in the city of Houston ever. That's what I would like, Mayor, for what it's worth. 
Thank you. And, and we will, we, certainly, we will follow up on it and we'll see where it is. And Thank we you. will make sure that the process doesn't take um, an undue period of time. I think people, when wages have been taken, uh, if people are entitled to their wages, they need their money like yesterday. That's correct. So I, I got it and we understand. Appreciate so if you check back with me uh, sometime, uh, um, you know, by the end of the week or next week, I can tell you where we are in the process. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. Okay, Ms. Babineau Daigle. Ms. Daigle, to be followed by Ms. Mr. Marion Scott. Good afternoon, City Council. My name is Stacy Babineau Daigle. I am from Brobridge, Louisiana, and I currently live here in Katy, Texas. And I have to say that my reason for being in front of you all this afternoon is because I founded a program and it's an organization called Formula for Faith. I actually visited your city council last week where I witnessed an enormous amount of um, experiences from different um, <laughs> resolutions that was um, granted and um, comments that was made in regards to some very important issues that the state was experiencing. And as an employee for the city of Brobridge, where I'm from, I worked with the mayor as his first assistant in regards to solving a lot of issues that not only the residents of the city was experiencing, but also helping our city councilman with some of the issues their constituents was experiencing as well. During that time of me being with the city, I took my experiences and my um, knowledge to the state of Louisiana where I worked for the Alcohol and Tobacco Control Department, where I work as a liaison officer for the department with the legislature and governmental and public affairs for business owners who were also experiencing different issues, just like some residents. And those issues vary. They go from small issues to major issues. And my purpose for forming an organization with FAITH, FAITH being an acronym for fixing an issue that helps. It's not hard. I'm so passionate about it because working with the state and working with legislators, we constantly found ways and measures to help businesses who were experiencing issues as far as why their permits were taking so long, why they couldn't sell tobacco, why they couldn't sell alcohol. And my formula, as my minutes are gonna deplete, I hope you ask me a question as far as what the formula is. I don't wanna waste any of my time <laughs> introducing myself to you all in regards to the formula. But I have to say that I come into your city I love it being here. I have for three years, my kids go to school in Katy. I have a graduate who just um, completed her course at Katy High School in 2017. So I must say that I commend you all in your effort. And with what I have already experienced today, I commend the mayor. You take every initiative that you can in directing the person in the right place, because I think formally that's what it takes. A lot of times our youth they are unfamiliar with what routes need to be taken in regards to solving small issues. Sometimes they don't even understand how to fill out a FAFSA in order for them to go to school post-graduation. And those things are not taught in secondary education. Those things are not introduced to them during senior year unless they are asked questions about it. Thank you, ma'am. Your time has expired. Thank, Thank you. you. One second. Councilman Borkin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Stacy, good to see you. Can you first ask your beautiful daughter to stand up? I can. I would like to introduce to you guys Tylee Dago. She's 10 years old. And Come on with us, shy self. Stand yeah. up. <laughs> Stacy came to Houston, uh, and we met her. Senator Miles and I and a few others met her uh, uh, shortly as she, after she arrived. And, and, and your resume, uh, working for the mayor in Louisiana and your background states is just remarkable. And I've said once and I said again, you need to move out of Katy and move <laughs> into Houston in District D. We want you in our city. But uh, on a serious note, I, uh, I commend you for what you're trying to do, but can you just clarify a little bit more in just short what you want from the city or would like from the city? Absolutely. Thank you, for Councilman Barkin Fox, and the question about the formula. It's a very easy formula, it's only three steps. The person with the issue, the person in the middle of the mediator that's making ideas happen, which would be formula for faith, and the person who's in charge of making that final decision. 
There's a lot of channels that they go through. There's a lot of phone calls that's being made and they're being transferred to different departments and they are not the person that is capable of helping them. And the, the end result needs to just be a yes or a no. If it being a yes, we can go forward. And if it's a no, then we find out what it is it's gonna take to make a yes. So Stacy, you're speaking about internal here at the city. So if someone calling 311, you're saying a way uh, the formula or three steps, I guess, to try to address issues when residents call into the city. Sometimes the answer can be a quick yes or a quick no. But are you speaking in terms of from personal experience that it's hard to maneuver through yes. our system? Actually, it's people that I speak to because they don't know what route to take. And my reason for being here and is to actually ask the city council to just adopt the plan, just to adopt the formula. It's not really in regards to me pushing it through and to making How this. How do we get a copy of it, Stacey? Do you I have actually have a few pamphlets here that I would like to give to an assistant, okay. from my assistant, my protege, to <laughs> yours. Right. Um, and it's basically just a formula that you guys can adopt into your own departments, into your own administration, and just take the steps. It's actually the idea is making it happen, solving the problems, and just moving forward. That's pretty much what it is in regards. And Mayor, I also want to tell you that um, your national in, your national endowment art organization, well, it's actually something that you're putting together for people who have great ideas. I think it's phenomenal, and I wish you all of the best applicants that you can get Thank in you. regards to making it and be success. Thank you very much. Thank you're you. Welcome. Thank hey, you. Mr. Scott. Appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great Sorry. afternoon. Thank you. Mr. Scott. To be followed by Ms. Anita Williams. Good evening. I didn't. Speak into the mic, sir. I didn't want to do this. So let me just make that clear before I get started. My name is Marion Earl Scott. I am an ex ward of the court in the custody of Children Protective Services. Um, just trying to be real brief about why I'm here. I was released from a hospital that I'll keep between me um, to a foster group home owner by the name of Ollie Jewel Hilliard. Um, Ollie Hilliard, after I told the hospital, do not release me to her, then took me and had me beaten and stabbed in my chest. She's the owner of Jamie's House, Inc. Um, she then opened a beauty and barber college where she convinced me to come down and participate in it since I was an ex ward of the court, had faced out of the state's custody. And I was convinced to do that. She advised me to go through the Texas Rehabilitation Commission before they changed her name into DARS. I contacted DARS several years later and I spoke to a very high ranking member in there and she was like, Marion, you're going to be all right. I just know it. Trust me, in a couple months you'll be all right. I wonder what she was talking about. Um, while at Jamie's house, I went to a dentist where the dentist drilled a hole into my brain and concealed it in concert with Jamie's House, Inc., Ollie Hilliard, and her faculties. And the hospital put a device in my ears, because I told them, I said, don't release me to her. And so they put a device in my ears to make sure that she would do what was right. And so where she's beating me, they're screaming, Marion, where are you? I'm like, I don't know. I'm out of my right mind. I told y'all don't release me to her. And so she kept telling me to call this lawyer who is extremely busy. And so I, being that Children Protective Services to me is not responsible for what happened to me. They put me in the custody of this foster home. So her lawyer happens to be a very, very busy, busy man. And being that this is talking about a trust fund and all these different things that I can't navigate, and being that this man is still busy today, I uh, just 
got to the point where my cup has run over, so I'm here today before all of you. You've heard me speak about how come we cut police and firefighters funding. I'm not going to change on that. You can't even govern yourselves. Thank you, without. sir. Can Your I just time finish has this? Expired. Can I finish Thank this? you. Can I Thank just finish you. this? Thank you. You just finished your sentence. Thank you. You just finished your sentence. I don't believe your that, and I mean this from my heart, I don't understand how, I know it's a short on funds, but the city cannot run itself without laws, law enforcement, policemen, and firefighters. So when I came here, I was just simply saying, how do we cut their funding? That's like rent. We should always pay that off top because they're the ones who are putting their lives on the line. And if I was a terrorist for any of them, they are the first ones who have committed to protecting all of us. Thank so you very much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ms. Williams, Ms. Anita Williams. Ms. So Williams. No one, no one wants to help me figure this out. No, you were very clear. Well, Thank so you. Hey, Ms. Williams. You're the lawyer. Williams. Yeah. You're the lawyer of Ollie Hilliard. She Thank said, you, come sir. talk to you, sir. Are you going to meet with me? You Thank were very, you, sir. Thank you. You were, Thank very, you. you were very clear. I understand what you're Are you going to get with me? No, not today. But you were very clear. I got you. I understand what you were saying. Not, not, not today. Not today. Okay, we'll follow up with you. I'll have, let me have someone follow up with you, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Your mm -hmm. time has expired. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Williams. Ms. Williams is not present. Ms. Lavera Franshaw. Ms. Franshaw is not a, a present. Mr. Gary Dahl, D A H L. Mr. Dahl. Mr. Dahl. Mr. Dahl is here. To be followed by Ms. Emily Neum. Speaking turn, to the mic, sir. Turn that mic right to you. All right. A little better. Uh, well, um, Mayor Turner and the City Council, it's the yes. first time I've ever talked at one of these meetings uh, before, but. My name is Gary Michael Dahl. I'm a professional musician, and I've had a very successful band for quite a long time. Uh, we used to do a lot of work for the city of Houston, uh, but with the kind of the mayoral and administrative transitions and me being on the road and that sort of thing for a lot, we've kind of lost contact with a lot of the uh, event coordinators for the city of Houston. So we'd like to, if it's okay, reintroduce ourselves to you and uh, welcome the opportunity of working with you again. Um, my band's primarily been known for R&B, smooth jazz, and Caribbean music, <clears throat> and um, but most of uh, the top event coiners say we're one of the most versatile bands in the city. We were uh, we are all college-educated musicians. We've all been all over the world, toured with major acts, national acts. We used to do a lot of concerts for 99.1 Sunny, 102, uh, 96.5 The Wave, 95.7, and uh, we were the house band for the Texans for five years. Uh, we performed hundreds of concerts for the city of Houston, the Woodlands, Galveston, Sugarland, Pearland. Uh, I can't remember them all. There's so many of them. Anyway, uh, the city of Houston has used us as kind of a musical ambassadors in the past, sent us to different cities like oh, San Antonio, Dallas, uh, Austin, that sort of thing, to do concerts to attract tourism and to attract um, the convention business to, the, to Houston. But... Uh, because we're extremely versatile band and probably can play more styles than most most of the bands in Houston, the city's used us for a lot of major things. The most recent was uh, the uh, opening up of the uh, uh, the Hobby Airport Southwest Airlines uh, terminal. We did all that grand opening for all that stuff. So anyway, uh, we just like to welcome the opportunity to work with you again. I've been out of town. I was down in Panama and playing in South in South American different countries for a while. So we just want to see if we could uh, reestablish ourselves with you again. Good. What's the name of your group? It's the Gary Michael Dahl Band. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Have you uh, have you 
Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You were at one of our concerts about last year, but and I wanted to say hi to you, but there were so many people surrounding you during my break, I couldn't get close enough to you to shake your hand. I had to go and sing at my next gig. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have, you, uh, have you talked to Susan Christian? Uh, not lately. I yeah, she's, well, she's over special events. I, that's who I would recommend that you talk to. Okay. She's and I recommend I kind of announce it to the committee members as well. Yeah, well, Council go talk to Susan Christian. I know for the... Um, uh, the CITCO um, Freedom Over Texas event, mm -hmm. we're utilizing a lot of local and regional talent, you know, for those events. So, uh, but do, do talk to her. She, she is the guru on all of this and the mastermind and the, the conductor that orchestrated the whole thing. So um, please go in and, uh, and uh, have a visit with her and reintroduce okay. yourself to her. Hold on one second, uh, uh, Councilmember Stardick. I was going to say the same thing, Mayor. Thank you for coming up and, and uh, introducing yourself. We, we have the opportunity to hear a lot of great entertainment, and it is through Susan Christian's um, department that makes those, a lot of those decisions and recommendation, recommendations to the administration. So um, just because uh, it, we are under new management, <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> Susan is still the go-to person. So yeah. we, we depend on her a lot for even in our, in our districts when we have entertainment. Um, I had commercial art come out to my uh, Super Bowl event, and I was just thrilled. So we love having local talent, and we appreciate your, your work. Thank well, you. Well, thank you so much for having me here. And, and I would tell you there are about, probably about 30, 30 events that are taking place in the city every week. So, uh, but Susan, Susan Christian would be, the, would be the point person. Okay. Thank okay. you so much, sir. Thank you. Good to see you. Name is Emily Neum. To be followed by President Joseph Charles. Greetings, uh, Mayor and City Greetings. Council. Thank you for your service to the public. Uh, before I present my topic, I wanted to uh, tie it in with, with things that were already mentioned about how to raise funding for all the services needed in the city. Well, one thing that Kathy Griffin and the women who fight against trafficking have brought up is the fact that citizens that have been affected by trafficking, including communities, can claim property that was abused for trafficking as restitution. So we teach each community how to do this then we can get the capital, we can get the resources for development by going after crime, working together with the city, with the law enforcement, instead of, you know, getting caught up in crime and costing us more money. So that's, um, that's one way we could do it. Another way is, uh, that ties in with my presentation is creating uh, veteran jobs, doing the fundraising and development, and people are very sympathetic and will fund jobs and also student internships. If students that want to work off their educational loans get jobs doing this development, this capital fundraising for each district, we can get the resources <coughs> together. So uh, my presentation is how we can um, fund vet jobs and internships by focusing on three national landmarks in Houston. Uh, so while millions of public and private dollars have been spent fighting lawsuits, uh, We've, I've watched three national historic sites in Houston get destroyed for lack of funding. So my proposal is to take solutions that have been built around these proposals to save the landmarks and use that to attract funding to support these programs that are helping the city. So the three sites are the Astrodome, which uh, has been proposed for a center for movie production. I propose that we work with the other sanctuary cities that need a place to match up uh, immigrant families with legal jobs, with nonprofits, and stop this whole problem by investing in solutions instead of suing the government and wasting time and money. We could go into a solution and we can use the Astrodome to organize the leadership and also all the businesses and nonprofits that could be working on a solution to this problem. Uh, the Allen Parkway Village is a military site. It's also a civil rights uh, landmark. And uh, Sheila Jackson Lee signed uh, federal laws in 90, 1994 to turn it into a campus modeled after Rice. And again, this has never been developed because people were too busy suing and fighting politically, and I've watched it be destroyed. So I volunteered in Freemanstown. That's why I started getting involved. And instead of developing a campus, I watched the site get destroyed, neighbors get kicked out who actually are fighting to develop these plans. So we could fund this as a solution. We are owed so much restitution, millions of dollars, 
that had been spent destroying that site, if we worked with the city and the legal department, we could reclaim that restitution and develop it correctly. So I'd like to work with the city instead of fighting over these, these sites. And the current site that we're trying to save, there are 10 last historic houses um, that Gladys House has a plan to save it as vet housing. And I want to tie it in with the campus plan to save Freemanstown as a model district, not only to save it for uh, for all districts to be modeled you, after, after Thank that. Thank you, Your time has expired. Thank uh, may, you. I, may I please finish? If, Can you I will, have... if you would just finish okay. if, in a few sentences. Okay. Well, we can develop it locally for every district to save the resources. Instead of paying for crime and paying taxes into, you know, these political fights, uh, we can set up LLCs and invest locally in campus plans for each district and work together, bring together all the nonprofits and use the 10 houses to organize for each district. So the plan is to buy it through like a partnership with KPTFT Radio and U.S. Vets to use existing resources and organize it for, the, for each community so our money goes into that. And then propose it, this campus plan could be developed along the border um, as a proposal. Uh, instead of fighting over a wall, we can develop uh, similar campus development, sustainable business and housing and services as an alternative to fighting about the, the sanctuary you. cities and the, and the border. Thank you. Thank you for All your right, ideas. Thank you. thank you very much. Okay, President Charles. Is Mr. President here? Oh, Ms. Yes, President. he is. Huh? To be followed by Mr. Daniel Cohen. <clears throat> uh, City Council uh, Chambers, I'm requesting more time again and knowledge is known that I should receive time. You all with knowledge of who I am. This is still continuing. Uh, I'm not coming before elementary class of uh, council members for to identify with my case position in the welfare of the city. We have Edward Gonzalez, a former city council member. He did not qualify. He killed the police officer of these children here that are now within my protective custody that is known by all of you as city council members that is still being covered up. And you have Jerry Davis is being witnessed by you all. Uh, Balkan is another one who ran off. I'm being attacked by Jerry Davis that you have here also, Sylvester Turner. He's refusing for to identify. I need more time. And in order to. Thank you. Your time has expired. Thank you. Police assistance. Yes, thank you. The next speaker cleared. is Mr. Cohen. Mr. Daniel Mr. Cohen. Mr. President, we'll have to pick it up next week, Mr. President. Mr. Cohen. Thank you for the opportunity to address the, account, the council. I appreciate it as always. Um, I'm here today with a letter uh, signed by SEIU Texas, Indivisible Houston, which I'm here to represent, and Southeast Texas Progressives regarding health care action that's happening at a federal level. I'll read you a few sentences to sum some of it up. We, the people of Houston, oppose in the strongest terms the Better Care and Reconciliation Act, which was unveiled in Congress. Uh, 23 million more Americans will go without health care, including tens of thousands of residents in Houston across 10 uh, gerrymandered congressional districts. And though this is a federal issue, it is inescapably local. We know that uh, there are issues with mental health in the city. We know that there are issues when it comes to uh, employment benefits uh, for labor um, that, that can be an ongoing issue, and it doesn't end at the border of the city. I think I'll hyper-localize it in context of today, that if there's any city that's getting, uh, uh, if there's any company that's getting money from the city, then it only makes sense, uh, sense that uh, workers who are working full-time should receive full benefits as well. But we simply wanted to say that the issues of poverty and division will fall ever. Thank I'm you. Just, Thank you, sir. Just one second. I'll, I promise you. I'll be really brief. If you have finished your thought. Okay. Um, the issues of poverty and division will fall ever more to the city of Houston and Harris County, so we'd like to see the city council affirm through a resolution that all Houstonians are deserving of reasonable and affordable care. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I have a copy here. of the letter. If, there's if you'll give it to Rhonda, she'll make sure that all the council members And that completes the public session. Thank, Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, we will stand in recess until in the morning at 9 a.m. Thank you all.